uh, line dance is not just a matter of taking the puppet, moving it around with the music and call it a dance. The whole point about the lion dance is to tell a story. You have the lion represents good luck, the Buddha representing happiness, and the noise represents high energy. It brings energy to, to the dance. The firecrackers add to the level of noise that the drum, gong, and cymbal is already producing. And the noise was believed to chase away evil spirit. The older generation, they use the line dance to help determine whether they're going to have a good year or not. The line dance consists of a storyline from beginning to an end. Its ultimate goal is to go from this point to that point, get to the Chang, devour up the Chang, and then spread out the prosperity. That's the storyline. And whether there's going to be any mishap or any accident during the process that tells them whether they're going to have a good year or a bad year. So in that sense, in the very old traditional sense, it's very intense for both the dancer and the owner, just to make sure that nothing happens or, or nothing wrong went on in that situation. In our culture, people believe that the sight of a lion is a lucky sight. During New Year, they would go around and try to hear the drum or hear the firecrackers and run to it because they want to get a chance to see the lion because that's a sign of good luck. If they are able to come and touch the lion, better luck, right? The, the, the luck level kind of comes up stronger. And if they get to feed the lion, they get even more luck. Because now, if the lion accepts your offering, that means it likes you, right? It just doesn't get close to you, but it likes you. It, it accepted your offer. So that means it's going to be more likely to come around and protect you and, and give you the, uh, the luck that you are looking for. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a shrimp dumpling in a steamer. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two lobacos and a shrimp dumpling in a steamer. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three chung funs, two lobacos, and a shrimp dumpling in a steamer. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Four chicken feet, three chung funs, two lobacos, and a shrimp dumpling in a steamer. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me five cashew bows. Four chicken feet, three chung funs, two lobacos, and a shrimp dumpling in a steamer. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Six pizza seam wine. Five tazu bows. Four chicken feet. Three chung funs. Two lobacos. Had a shrimp dumpling in a steamer. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me seven deep fried spring rolls. Six plates of siu mai. Five tazu bows. Four chicken feet, three chung buns, two lobacos, and a shrimp dumpling in a steamer. On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eight dan tats baking, seven deep fried spring rolls, six plates of siu mai, five gai mei baos. Four chicken feet, three chimpanzees, two lobacos, and a shrimp dumpling in a steamer. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me nine wukots crunching, eight dan tots baking, seven deep fried spring rolls, six plates of siu mai, Four chicken feet, three chung buns, two lobacos, and a shrimp dumpling in a steamer. On the tenth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me ten, ten cups of jasmine, nine wukots crunching, eight dan tots baking, seven deep fried spring rolls, six plates of siu mai, five gok cha siu baos, yeah. Four chicken feet, 
three Charles Buns, two Lobacos, and a shrimp tumbling in a steamer. On the eleventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eleven mango pudding, ten cups of jasmine, nine wolcock crunching, eight dog dog baking, seven deep fried spring rolls, six plates of stew, my five tasu bows. Go to my king, yeah. Four chicken feet, three spring buns, two lobacos, and a shrimp dumpling in a steamer. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me twelve balls of sesame, eleven mango pudding, ten cups of jasmine, nine wolcock crunching, eight dantas baking, seven deep fried spring rolls, six plates of stew, my five. Chassis bows, jean bows, gamey bows, chassis bows, everything bows. Four chicken feet, three, three chicken feet, two lobacos, and a shrimp dumpling in a steamer. Hello and welcome to CHCP's first ever virtual um, membership meeting themed 2021 and the Lunar New Year of the Ox. My name is Edith Gong and I'm a vice president on the board and happy to be your MC for this evening. I do hope you enjoyed the pre-show. I especially enjoyed the 12 days of dim sum. If you didn't know that video was by Larissa Lamb. Baldwin Chu, also known as the rapper Only Wan, and their daughter Little Wan. They had their world premiere of their documentary Far East Deep South at last year's Cinequest just before the shelter in place started, so they were unable to complete the screenings. This year's the Year of the Ox, the second sign of the Chinese Zodiac. The Ox is known as hardworking, honest, strong, reliable, and methodical and in some cases known as stubborn. I hope you're all safe and well and taking care during this very unusual time. I hope you enjoyed the video highlights from last year as well. Even though much of it was spent sheltering in place, we still accomplished quite a bit and we really found new ways to connect with our members and the community at large. So what do we have in store for this evening? We have Erwin Wong, who'll be talking a little bit about our speaker series, and then he'll introduce a special guest from C100. Then we'll have the business portion of the meeting where we'll elect our officers and our trustees. Next, Dave Yick will share plans for this year, and then we'll have a short panel discussion and Q&A with a couple of the members of the executive board. You'll enjoy the student docent cultural ambassadors who share some really fun things about Chinese New Year, and we'll have some live entertainment. And then, of course, what would the celebration be without prizes and some time for socialization? You'll need to be present at the very end of the meeting in order to get your door prize, so don't leave before that. And I guarantee you it's worth the wait. Then at the very end, you'll be put into a breakout room where you can socialize with a smaller group of people. So while we can't eat together like we have at our past annual dinners, I hope that you'll enjoy some dim sum. You can see I have a dantat right here, maybe some boba tea and perhaps a little bit of mango pudding. So with that, let's get started with our program and I'd like to introduce our director, Erwin Wong. Thank you, Edith. Uh, we are honored today uh, to have Lloyd Finn from the Committee 100. Uh, and he will be presenting a sample trailer to the Project Elevate. And I will let you, um, I'll let Lloyd tell you all about it. So without further ado, here's Lloyd. Hi, everybody. Sorry, one second. I'm just uh, getting my slide ready. Um, here we go. So thank you, Arun uh, and Edith, uh, for that introduction. Uh, I'm Lloyd from the Committee of 100, C100, uh, which is um, the premier nonpartisan American leadership organization of prominent Chinese Americans, um, including 
uh, the late I.M. Pei, uh, Yo-Yo Ma, and others who founded the organization. And so uh, I'm here today to introduce our project from Foundations to Frontiers, Chinese American Contributions to the Fabric of America. And this is a, a long-term project aimed at highlighting a positive narrative of Chinese American contribution to America over the last 175 and more years. And we really uh, wanted to develop this program mostly in response to a lot of the anti-Chinese, anti-Asian rhetoric that uh, was that began in the Trump administration and became further inflamed um, in the last year during the COVID crisis. And so our main goals are to educate the really diverse and disparate Chinese American community as well as Chinese in America. Uh, second, um, to convene uh, Chinese Americans on these virtual talks to uh, really engage with the content as well as you know, share more about their own experiences as Chinese Americans. And then third, to really build a relationship with C100 so that C100 can be seen as a real ally for groups like CHCP and uh, yeah, Chinese Americans as individuals. And so um, I've been speaking with Erwin and Dave about uh, potentially doing a Project Elevate virtual talk for the CHCP community um, sometime in March. And uh, the main uh, thrust of that is uh, one hour presentation with 30 minutes for uh, the, an actual PowerPoint presentation, and then 30 minutes for um, a moderated Q&A. Um, and so that's, that's the main just, you know, I want to keep it short because I know this is going to be a long meeting for you all. Um, so thank you, Erwin, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, Loy. That was uh, a very informative presentation. I look forward to the full version uh, in March timeframe. So hopefully everybody uh, stay tuned. It's gonna be coming soon. Uh, invitation will go out uh, in the uh, latter part of February. So we're at that point where we have some questions for you, Lloyd, are you ready? Sounds good. Okay, here's the first question. How will these Project Elevate talks about affecting the Chinese American community? Yeah, that's a great question. So in terms of how we want to make an impact in terms of this report on our community, um, as I said before, we wanted to make sure that this kind of research uh, has an impact and people actually read it. First of all, it's, it consists of a white paper and seven pillar reports across industries like science and tech, uh, public health, military and national security and uh, other pillars. And uh, we really want people to engage with the material and then also to really feel proud of what, uh, you know, we as a community, bef uh, you know, from back in the 1800s all the way to now have really accomplished together, um, as well as some of the, identifying some of the struggles that we still have to overcome together, like, uh, you know, glass ceiling in the workplace uh, for a lot of Chinese Americans, right. racial profiling in general, but also by the US government towards Chinese American scientists and researchers and professors. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously there are more issues, um, but those are the main goals, I think, in terms of impact. Great. Uh, second question, uh, what are committee's 100 key goals and objectives? Great, yeah, so the Committee 100 has a dual mission to one, foster constructive dialogue between uh, the U.S. and Greater China, which means, uh, you know, any any groups from mainland China to Taiwan, Hong Kong, as well as other uh, you know areas in Asia with a strong Chinese diaspora, and then second to advocate for Chinese Americans domestically for greater inclusion in all aspects of mainstream American society and culture, and so. You know, we feel that this Project Elevate effort dovetails quite well into those dual missions. Uh, mm -hmm. And we really hope that we can engage with CHCP on this effort, as well as other potential collaborations. Oh, definitely. Uh, we're going to be partners for a long time. So here's the last question. Um, and what are the actions do you see that CHCP or other similar organization might want to take following a talk like Project Elevate? Yeah, and so 
I guess, you know, after this kind of a, a talk that we're going to do, um, we really want to, I think, better understand the community uh, that CHCP, for instance, serves and identify some of the um, sort of some of the issues that we can take on there. I think naturally out of this research project on Chinese Americans, we really feel like it's important that uh, Chinese American and then Asian American history is incorporated into uh, you know, local and state level curricula overall. Um, I think in Connecticut, for instance, there's a new state law that was passed that mandates that uh, Black and Latino studies is incorporated into the public school, high school curriculum. But the, you know, there's a big group and some other groups being left out of that picture, right? And so we really feel like it's imperative that um, we start speaking up now to make sure that our history is told the right way um, from a young age. So that's one area I think there's a potential collaboration but then obviously future events and programming uh, geared towards the CHCP community. Outstanding, outstanding. So this ends the Q&A. Thank you very much, Lori, for uh, presenting Project Elevate. And I look forward to the full version in March. And we'll talk about that later. Great, so thank with you, that, everybody. Thank you. And so with that said, back to you, Edith. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lloyd. I know it's a late night for you um, for staying on with us. I appreciate that. And thank you, Erwin. Now I'd like to introduce Dave Yick, our board president, who will move on to the business portion of our meeting. Hi, all. And thank you, Edith. Uh, thank you all for joining us virtually as we celebrate the Year of the Ox. Now to the serious part of the meeting. First, in order to expedite the nomination and election process, I'd like to ask for someone on the board to make a motion to dispense with the usual business agenda. This is Judy. I move that we dispense with the business portion of this meeting. Thank you, Judy. And do we have a second? This is Anita. I second that motion. Thank you, Anita. Uh, board of Director, members, please indicate your vote by typing aye, nay, or abstain in the chat. And we'll give uh, uh, Chris a minute to uh, tally that up. By the way, Chris is our former secretary, soon uh, to be, well, not former yet, soon to be VP of Education. Yes, I'm secretary for another five minutes. Um, and I will say that the eyes have it. I see all eyes. So I'd say that the eye votes are unanimous. The motion passes. Thank you, Chris. Now, can we have someone from the board make a motion to have the slate of nominees be presented by the nominating committee? This is Judy Wong. I move that the slate of officers and directors, trustees and advisory board members be approved. Thank you, Judy. Uh, can we have a second? Yes, uh, this is Peter Young, and I second that motion. Thank you, Peter. The slate of nominees will now be presented by the nominating committee, and that would be directors David Wu and Pinky Fung. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, David. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen really quickly. Great, I hope everybody can see that. Um, so wanted to give um, our, our viewers tonight a uh, overview of our of the CHCP slate. And so we're mainly gonna go over the, uh, the new candidates and, uh, and the changes to the, the board slate. So first off, we'll go over the CHCP advisory board candidates that are, that, that are gonna be new to the board. So one of the things that's new this year is that we're adding student members to our board and uh, wanted to also uh, introduce uh, Joshua Zhang. And Joshua Zhang is currently a freshman at San Jose State University. He's majoring in computer networking and a minoring in business. He is a member of our uh, student docent cultural ambassador program liaison. And um, he also has another talent for entertainment, which you may not, which you may find out a little bit later in our program. I better not say much more, otherwise I will spoil the surprise. 
And next we have Ron. Ron is a retired marketing executive whose passions include genealogy and family history. So next we have Irene, who's our second student member. And Irene is a senior at UC San Diego, majoring in human interaction and minoring in business and computer science. She's working on a QR barcode project for the History Park San Jose. And her park will be used in other museums within History San Jose as well. And we have um, Marianne, Marianne Rosenbaum. Marianne is a retired librarian geologist an educator with three college degrees. And so um, here you have the CHCP officer slate and uh, we have a few folks that will be new to, the, to their roles and uh, we have President David Yick returning as well as, uh, as Edith Gong, but we also have uh, Chris Yoakum and Liz Chu and Bozina Teo in new roles. Um, also wanted to give folks an overview of the uh, directors, um, and all of them are, are, are current directors as well. Uh, that's Peter Yang, Judy Wong, Brenda Wong, David Wu, myself, uh, Erwin Wong, Tom Stutzman, and Jonathan Wong. For trustee, um, beside we have um, Debbie Gong Gai, Jerry Wong, Anita Wong Kwok. We have um, a new um, role for L. L has L Low, sorry. Hello. Hello. L has been a CHCP member for 13 years, 10 of which were as treasurer. He is a lifelong resident of the Bay Area and he enjoyed traveling and fishing. Finally, I wanted to give folks a overview of our entire slate. Um, and so with that, I will hand it back to you, Dave. Thank you, David, and thank you. Now that you've had an opportunity to see the slate of nominees and the bios and photos, uh, I'd like to ask for a motion to accept the slate as presented. This is Judy Wong. I move that the slate of officers and directors, trustees, and advisory board members be approved. Uh, thank you. And do we have a second? This is Peter Young, I second it. Thank you, Peter. I'd like to remind that all members of CHCP that have paid their dues for 2021 are eligible to vote and will be using the honor system. So if you paid or the check is in the mail, you are eligible to vote. And there will be, a. we'll do this via polling and indicate yes, no, or abstain. And if we could show that, and remember to go to the bottom and hit the sub submit tab. And we'll just wait 30 seconds for all votes to be entered and tallied. Okay, I think we're, how's it going, Chris? Uh, it's going fine. And so uh, I think we're waiting for the results of the poll to be displayed. Okay. 2% that, okay, go ahead, Chris. So we had uh, one person abstain and 43 vote yes. So the, mess, the motion passes resoundingly. Thank you. Now to make it official and to make sure that no one changes their mind, um, we're going to have the, uh, the, uh, the oath administered by our esteemed founder, Jerry Wong. Good evening, good evening. As Historical and Cultural Project co-founder, it gives me great pleasure to administer the oath of office. 
for 2021 to the directors, trustees, and advisory board members. Tonight, we are doing it virtually. I have asked directors David Wu and Pinky Fung to represent all of you in the swearing in ceremony. So David and Pinky, on behalf of the directors, trustees and advisory board members, do you promise to execute your duties of office to the best of your ability, to preserve and treasure the best of our culture and traditions, to utilize patience and wisdom in all judgments and actions, to maintain and extend CHCP's outreach to our community to promote diversity. So Pinky and David, please signify by saying, I do. I do. Thank you. So by the authority vested in me, it gives me great pleasure. And I now declare all of you duly installed as the 2021 board directors and trustees and advisory board of the Chinese Historical and Cultural Project of Santa Clara County. Congratulations all. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you so much, Jerry. Well, um, I just wanted to say a few words, give a quick overview of 2020 and also plans for 2021. I'd like to mention for those of you who saw the pre-show entertainment and informational session, uh, you saw some of the, uh, the shots from past events on our chcp.org website. And I encourage you, if you haven't, if you've missed some of the events uh, that during the past year or would like to you know, ch check them out again, uh, I encourage you to go to our website and, and, and look at that section. And so can I have the, uh, the slides? First slide, first bullet was uh, the last event that I attended in person, which we held a meeting of advisory board members. There were about 20 of us in attendance. Um, and this was an informational meeting which included a museum tour and a luncheon. We quickly then pivoted to holding board meetings and events virtually via Zoom. And um, there are certain benefits uh, which, I want to just highlight, and it was that it was easier to bring together speakers and panels who are out of the local area. And attendance increased from 50 to 60 in person to hundreds and in some cases thousands during our Zoom webinars. So that was something that we uh, take a little pride in, in, in having achieved this past year. We developed new partnerships with the Center for Asian American Media, the Bay Area Chinese Genealogy Group, and CHSA up in San Francisco and others. These partnerships were made easier because distance was no longer an issue and attendees were able to come from all over the country and even from overseas. The technical resources needed were greater, but we were able to pull our resources with our partners. Relative to professional development leadership training, this is a, one of the key initiatives uh, that I think is very important for the future sustainability of CHCP. And that's uh, training that we have uh, provided free or low cost. And we make that available to board and advisory members. And in some cases, all our members. We will be initiating and planning for a new website and our new membership management system. Uh, and we did this because 
we needed to replace our old website, which was becoming more unreliable and fixes that were becoming more difficult and costly. And also we wanted to make our overall administrative system more efficient and effective. We completed the World War II film project for the most part. Um, it required a major commitment of time and the financial resources. The film has received good reviews and we're still finishing up the associated teaching materials, but uh, the end is, is, is in sight. Uh, there are plans established for the museum upgrade of the second floor. Plans have been submitted, budget approved, uh, and the audio visual equipment upgrades uh, have been identified and this will be completed sometime this year. I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to also thank our many partners and volunteers and I'd like to give special thanks to Gail Chong and Ron Chen for the, and the BACGG uh, team. And by the way, uh, as you noticed, uh, Ron was kind enough to join CACP as an advisory board member. Uh, I just want to say that uh, BACGG was a major reason for the success we had uh, in hosting webinars in this past year. Next slide, please. Edith will give us more information about the uh, new membership management system. Uh, we will open the museum as soon as we are able to, and we hope to be able to do an in-person membership social later in the year. Uh, we will continue to st strengthen board recruitment and, and utilization. Uh, we are looking for talented board members uh, wherever we can find them, and we'll even go out of state. As, you, as noted, we have added student members to our advisory, and we're also providing opportunities for cross-training with uh, different officers rotating assignments. We will update our strategic plan for the coming year. It's been two years since we did that. Uh, we will, oh, looking for small group interactions and you'll get a chance to try that out at the end of the uh, meeting today. And uh, we're looking to strengthen our partnerships and cultivate new ones. We'll be looking for doing reciprocal uh, arrangements and maybe field trips with other Rome museums like the Chinese American uh, or the Asian Art Museum in San Francisco and CHSA up in San Francisco also. And lastly, we will plan uh, for a big celebration next year to uh, do a combo event, the 30th anniversary of the museum and the 35th anniversary of CHCP. Okay, now we are going to move to the, um, the question and answer portion of the uh, session. And I'd like to reintroduce Edith and Chris. Please jump in here. And uh, the Edith wants to just talk a little bit about and, and fill us in on what's coming up with uh, wild apricot, whatever that is, so. <laughs> Great, thank you, Dave. So I've been fortunate enough to, uh, uh, with a team of people, been um, working on the products. So if you could bring up the slide deck, please. I just wanted to share a little bit about some of the things that we're gonna be doing this year in terms of um, a new member management system and our website that's powered by a company called Wild Apricot. So if you hear about that. Um, so next slide, thank you. So a couple of new member features that you'll be able to do and interact with on the website. You can actually update your own profile. So everybody will be input into the system and it'll have your membership info and then you'll use your um, um, 
uh, email as your username and a password. And for those of you, if you're a patron level member, meaning that you paid the additional amount to become a patron, whether in an individual or a family membership, you can actually print your own membership card. So can you guys see this? This is an example of the membership card. So you can see that it has Rome and then it has your name and it has your um, end date. So that's all taken directly from the system. So now you can print on demand. And if you are a patron level member, just a reminder that you can go to up to 400 museums that are located throughout the US. And in California alone, there's almost 70 museums. So for example, both in the San Jose and San Francisco area, you could go to the Asian Art Museum, the Walt Disney Family Museum, the San Jose Museum of Art, of course, our own museum, the Cartoon Art Museum, a lot in the, in the area. You can also pay for any of our future events online directly renewals, memberships, and make donations, and you'll get automated notifications when you pay online. And then in the future, we look to have member-only content as well. Next slide. And here's a slight preview, as you can see, of the new site. We've got some simplified menus, and we've taken some of the colors, the bright colors from the CHCP logo, and made that as part of the theme. And then you'll be able to see our calendar events in a list view, but you can also look at it um, as you would a regular calendar at a month's glance. And then you can even click on an icon and save that event if you've registered for it and it'll automatically come down to whatever calendar system you used. And then we're um, gonna make all of our, our communications um, a little bit more modern and streamlined. So those are just some things to look forward to. You'll get an email telling you exactly what you need to do once you're set up in the system, but we hope you'll be able to interact with us much more and we hope to make some of the operations a little bit smoother. So that's it for me from the, um, the new website and the member management system. Really looking forward to getting that launched. Thank you, Edith. Uh, Chris, can you um, share with us the museum's plans for this coming year and, and beyond? Yes, uh, so I'm Chris Chokum, the uh, new co-vice president for education. Uh, most of you have known me uh, formerly as a secretary sending emails to you and such. And as Edith has just explained, we're using Wild Apricot from now on and you'll be getting nice uh, communications from Wild Apricot when that uh, project is all together. Um, in the area of education, um, we're making some improvements to the Chinese American Historical Museum, uh, which we hope will be open maybe within the next six months. Um, and the first of those is that we're updating the interactive timeline. Uh, some of your old timers will know that we had a, uh, a static um, timeline of local, national, and world history connected with Chinese and Chinese Americans on the wall of the museum. And that is now uh, been replaced by a digital interactive um, large screen. And because it's uh, a, a large screen television with a digital file, we can keep adding to it. And we are now going to have uh, it updated and have the recent events added to it. Um, in addition to that, um, we are also going to have on the second floor of the museum some upgrades. And the point of that is to have changing content. So those of you who've been to the museum before and want to go and see something new will now be able to see um, new uh, changing content on the second floor of the museum. Um, third, uh, CHCP is a major player in the History San Jose project called Immigration Tell Your Story. And this is a project that is designed to provide school children with information about immigrants to America. Um, and CHCP contributes to that project in two ways. First of all, we're a major provider of funding so that as many school children can be funded to come to the History San Jose History Park um, and participate in immigration, what's your story? And secondly, uh, CHCP is providing content for that project uh, with regard to uh, Chinese immigrants to America. Um, 
Finally, I would like to point out that the ongoing project uh, of the traveling exhibit, which takes some of the historical content that's in the museum and presents it in a portable version uh, at schools, malls, uh, libraries, and so forth, um, at some point in the near future will be upgraded, but right now we're mainly interested in having the pandemic finally go away so that we be can begin to have the traveling exhibit um, out again. By the way, it's called Pioneering the Valley, um, Chinese American, the Chinese American legacy in Santa Clara Valley. And so as soon as you uh, hear that uh, we can have events out in public again, you may wish to make suggestions to us about where the traveling exhibit can be displayed. So that's all I have, Dave, back to you. Thank you, Chris. And I want, I'm looking at the chat, I don't see too many questions yet. So I'm gonna encourage um, all in the audience to uh, send in your questions. Meanwhile, there were some questions that were sent in in advance and uh, Liz, our new, newly elected secretary, will um, uh, be reading from some of those. Liz? Hi. Hi, everyone. Okay, so um, Edith and Chris, if you wanna just chime in, this one has to do basically when, um, when exactly will the museum be open? Um, I was uh, talking recently with uh, Anita uh, Kwok, who attended the affiliates meeting at uh, History San Jose yesterday, and she said that uh, President Bill Schro said, um, when we reach yellow, well, as you know, we are now in purple, <laughs> then we'd have to get back to red, get back to orange, and finally get back to yellow. Um, so... It, it won't be all that soon. I'm afraid that's uh, the, all the news that I have to share. Okay, thank you. Another question I have is um, how can a person or how can I help and be part of a CHCP program? What ways can I help? Uh, I'll take that on, Liz. Well, you can mm -hmm. help out in various ways. Of course, if you'd like to make your major commitment, you can come on and join the board. We're always looking for um, energetic people uh, to help on the board, or you can be on the advisory board. And hopefully when the museum opens, we're always looking for adult docents to, to be there while the student docents are there. So you can volunteer as a docent at the museum. I've done it many, many times, it's great fun. And then of course, if you'd like to help in any way in any of our functional areas, all you have to do is raise your hand and let us know. And again, if you are a member, we have some interest forms in the profile that you can check about the things that you'd like to do if you're interested in doing some help with the website, you know, design, we're looking for someone to help with social media. So you can help out in many, many ways. And of course, we always look for um, monetary contributions to assist with all of the programs that we do. So we will take your time, your treasure and your talent. Hey, wonderful. Thank you. Um, I don't see any questions from the chat room at this time. Um, if anybody wants to chime in in the chat room and ask a question to our panel here, that would be great. Liz, keep rolling with uh, some of the questions that you were, that were submitted okay. in advance. Um, so what, um, I know in your panel discussion, you talked about perhaps some of the field trips. Um, when the shelter in place restrictions are lifted, what field trips are planned? Is there any specific plans for that? I, I, um, I think I can try to go ahead, come up Dave. An answer for that. The, uh, we have a number of museums in the area that um, are part of uh, the room, which um, are network of 400 museums across the country and 60, 70 in, in California. And uh, so we would like to do some field trips with them. It does, for those who are matron, patron levels, members that cost nothing to, uh, to visit those museums. And uh, I think we can arrange some uh, mutually uh, beneficial uh, exchange programs. Uh, a VIP tour may be uh, in the offering. And so that's one of the things we're anxiously 
wanting to look forward to uh, as soon as shelter in places restrictions are lifted. Okay, we have time for one more question. Okay, um, this one is actually coming from me. <laughs> um, I, the, the wild apricot program, how secure is that particular program? It's completely secure. Um, <laughs> uh, we wouldn't have uh, accepted it if it wasn't. So um, the company has what they call an SSL certificate. And then we use a partner that does the payment system. So it's completely secure. You don't have to worry about anything. And we show only the name, their first and last name in the membership directory and nothing else. And you can choose to show more about your profile if you so choose. So you have complete control over what's seen. Um, name and your, your first and last name are the only thing that's seen in the member directory. So nothing else is shown if you don't want it to be. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all we have for right now. Thank you. And if there's any other questions that perhaps the panel, uh, if, it, if any of the audience would like to direct any questions, perhaps we can post them on the website. Or we'll, we'll, Answers. we'll answer by email if there, if there are uh, not of general interest. If they're general interest, we'll, we'll get back to all the uh, people who uh, attended this meeting and registered Great. for the meeting. Thank okay, you. so this wraps up this portion of the meeting. Uh, somehow I've lost my schedule. So Edith, I'm gonna return it back to you. Great, thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right, so now what I'd like to do is introduce Brenda Wong, one of our board directors and a past president, and she's also the program manager for the Student Docent Cultural Ambassador Program. Thanks, Ida. Hi, everybody. I'm Brenda Wong and the chair of the Student Docent Cultural Program, Cultural Ambassador Program called SDCAP. If you go onto our chp.org website, you'll be able to find some information about the SDCAP, the requirements, the benefits, and an application for SDCAP. Briefly, SDCAP wants to offer high school and college youth opportunities to learn more about Chinese and Chinese American history and culture. Also to provide opportunities for them to increase their communication skills and build their confidence as they assist and docent in the Chinese American Historical Museum at History Park San Jose and at other local outreach venues. Projects showing the students' creativity and technical skills and liter literary um, skills are include projects such as filmmaking that Dave mentioned. Um, they have made a film to honor Chinese American World War II veterans of the China, Burma, and India theater. They've also done great brochure making such as this one, which was used in Utah to honor the Chinese railroad workers. Uh, this was done to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad. And tonight, you'll get to take home this attractive brochure, which five members of this SDCAP program created just for you to have as a memento of our program. So to begin our SDCAP sharing for Chinese New Year, I'd like you to meet Vanessa Lam and Sarah Yen, who will share with you the 2021 Year of the Ox brochure. All right, thank you, Ms. Wong. So I'd like to present commonly eaten foods during Chinese New Year. I'll say the name once in Cantonese, followed by Mandarin. So first we have Tong Yun or Tong Yuan, which are glutinous rice balls eaten for their circular shape and represent unity and harmony. Next we have Fa Choi or Fa Cai, which is a vegetable dish eaten because the name of the dish is a homophone for the Chinese word meaning prosperity. And lastly, we have something that I'm sure everyone is quite familiar with, shou gao or shui jiao, which are dumplings. And they represent longevity and wealth. And the shape of the dumpling is also similar to old currency from China. Now, before I pass it on to Sarah, I'd like to wish everyone great luck and great profit in Cantonese. Daika Daile. Thank you, Vanessa. So I'll be talking about the traditions that happen during Chinese New Year. 
All the foods that Vanessa mentioned are included in the reunion dinner with family on New Year's Eve. Other traditions include public celebrations, such as traditional performances like the dragon and lion dances that you saw earlier. Multiple times a year, the Student Docent Cultural Ambassador Program has their own dragon team performances. Other traditions include red decorations such as lanterns, firecrackers, and of course, red envelopes. To end, I'd like to wish you all um, to have abundance every year. And in Mandarin, it's Nian Nian Yu. Thank you, girls. So don't forget, you can get one of these very attractive brochures yourself by visiting the chcp.org homepage. And you can down, there's a link to download it yourself. All right, thanks girls. I see a lot of you wearing red tonight. And so next for sharing, we have uh, Emmalyn and Casey, and they'll be sharing to you about why wearing red and firecrackers is so popular at Chinese New Year. They are storytellers who will share the legend of Nian. Thank you, Mrs. Wong. We'll now be telling the story behind um, some Chinese New Year's Day traditions. On New Year's Day, it is a day of celebration. Lucky red decorations and loud firecrackers are everywhere. Wait, but why do we celebrate with red decorations and firecrackers? Well, there's a legend about the origins of that tradition. A long time ago, there was an old beggar. On one New Year's Eve, he came to a happy and peaceful village near the sea seeking some place to stay. He was surprised to see that the villagers were locking up their houses and packing up their belongings. What's going on? He asked. But the villagers were too busy to take any of notice of him or to offer him any shelter. Finally, the old beggar met an old woman who kindly brought him food, but she refused to give him shelter and warned him to leave the village quickly. The old beggar asked, why? Because of the monster caught Nian, the old woman said. It lives at the bottom of the sea, but every year on New Year's Eve, it comes out of the sea and rampages through the village. Nian has big, nasty horns and teeth, and it demolishes our livestock and our crops, and it eats the small children. Nian sounds very frightening, the old beggar said. That's why we must lock up the, our houses and hide in the mountains, the old woman said. Please, leave the village to hide from Nian. It is too dangerous to stay here. The old beggar thoughtfully said, if you let me stay here for the night, I can drive away the monster in the end. The old woman finally agreed and let him stay at her house. While the villagers ran to the mountains, the old beggar set about laying his surprise for the monster Nian. Midnight approached and the fearsome Nian prowled into the village. It noticed one of the houses all lit up with candlelight. Nian approached cautiously and saw that the house was also covered all over with bright red paper. The old beggar smiled when he noticed that Nian was shaking with fear at this unusual house. Bang! 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 The old beggar, dressed in bold red, burst out of the house and set off the firecrackers in the yard. Boom, boom, boom. The old beggar beat his drum to create a cacophony of noise. Ha, 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 ha. Upon seeing the monster Nian terrified, the old beggar laughed loudly at it. Nian turned on his tail and fled from the village. In the morning, the villagers trickled back into the village and to their delight, they found it in perfect condition. How did you do it? They asked the old beggar. The old beggar told them, Nian is afraid of the color red, bright light, and loud noises. Since then, every year, the villagers decorate in red, light lanterns, and sit off firecrackers to keep the monster Nian away. And today, it has become tradition to decorate in red and sit off firecrackers as a way to celebrate the new year. Happy New Year! Xin Nian Kuai Le! Sun Ning Fai Lo! 
Thank you so much, Emily and Casey, for your wonderful storytelling and your very attractive original drawings. Lastly, everyone, I'd like you to meet Joshua Zhang, our new advisory member and second year SDCAP liaison. Joshua really loves music. And so he wants to send his New Year greetings to you through the singing of a song, May We All Be Blessed With Longevity. This song was made popular by the pop singer Teresa Tang and is based on a 1000 year old poem from the Song Dynasty. In Cantonese, it's Dan Yun Yan Chung Gao. Joshua will be singing to you in Mandarin. Hi, I'm Joshua, and I will be performing Dan Yuan Yun Sang Jiu. bring you wealth.
和气生财。Thank you, Joshua. I feel longevity coming because I was so at peace listening to you sing. We are so proud of Vanessa, Sarah, Emmeline, Casey, and Joshua for taking time to share themselves, for and presenting such an educational and wonderful entertainment segment for the program. We want to wish you great success in your school year. So, hock yip jun bo. Now back to Edith. Thank you, Brenda. Let's give another virtual round of applause to these really incredible, dedicated, and talented students. Uh, you can use the little reaction icons in there, or type in a message to them in the chat. I think they they really deserve it. And we're really thrilled to have、uh, Joshua on the advisory committee. And now, as I mentioned, we have Jerry Wong and Peter Young who are going to be doing our virtual prize drawing. So I'm so glad to see that everybody stayed on. So you have to be present in order to receive the door prize. So listen carefully if they call out your name because we need to identify you. Hello, everybody. Here we are, Peter. Are we ready to give out those prizes? Yes, we are. I am very excited、uh, to be paired up with Jerry again. We've done this for the last few years at the real meeting, but we're doing it again at the virtual meeting tonight. Yes, and so we have a wonderful year of the Ox Starbucks gift cards to give everyone. So we have four prizes. So Chris, we need your help. We need a Wheel of Fortune to help us pick out the name. And make sure you're unmuted, everyone. The Hearth the Wheel will be picking a name. Okay, spin the wheel, please. Everybody, unmute yourself now, so I'll hear you when you yell out. I have to get up close to read the name on the wheel. <laughs> okay, all right. The first one I see is Jeffrey Lee. Are you there, Jeffrey? Jeffrey Lee, show yourself, Jeffrey Lee. Are you there, Jeffrey? You have to be here, otherwise you don't get your Starbucks card for coffee, Jeffrey. No, okay, then we have. All right, we、we'll、have to go again. <laughs> Make sure you unmute yourself so you have sufficient time to speak out that you're present. Your name on there.、Oh, yeah. I'm not muted, honey. Don't do the dishes yet, please. Oh, raise your hand. Unmute yourself or raise your hand so someone sees you. Okay, and that is、uh, S Matsuura. S Matsuura. Is that、uh, related to you, Jerry? No, I don't think so. S Matsuura, are you here?、Mm. I thought I saw you before. Are you unmuted? I saw your picture earlier. S Matsuura. Please show yourself or speak out. That's a no. I saw you, someone. Okay. All right. Sorry. Sorry. We tried. Next.、Oh, no. Let's see if we can get our first winner tonight. Yeah, help us, Anita,、uh, Edith. Scroll the names and see if you. Yeah, see I'm looking.、People. I don't see the people that you've picked、okay. so far. Okay. Here we go. Oh, what is it? Patricia Chin. Patricia Are you Chin. present? I saw you, Patricia. Where were you? Are you here, Patricia? Are you present? <laughs> Looks like we're striking out three in a row. I saw so her. Far, on... it's, it's Chris's fault. You got to pick somebody、I、that's here. I saw her before, Chris. Aren't you,、uh, Pat, Patricia? Pat, aren't you here? No, she she's not. The... She's not in the list. I don't okay, see her. She was under the Grant Avenue Folly. She was here. Okay, we got to pick our first winner right now. Here we go. Come on, pick my name. Pick my And name. And the winner is. <laughs> Oh, Emily Chin, are you present? Emily Chin, I saw her. Emily, you, I saw you. Are you still here, Emily? Emily, I do not see her as a participant. Although Julie Yick has offered to take someone's Starbucks card. <laughs> <laughs> We have not gotten our first winner. Come on. Okay, come on. Let's win again. They were on here. The year of the、uh, Starbucks card. 
Damn it, spin it. Where did she get that? Because I went to look and they didn't have it. And I bought them all. Winner. Um, winner Barbara is. Voss is also here. She wants you to pick her. Okay, <laughs> here's the card. I'm ready to give the card. You can't see and it. And the winner is another five minutes. Tom. Okay. Dennis Tom. I saw your name. Are you still here, Dennis Tom? He there is, is a here. I see Dennis Tom. Dennis, yes. you know okay, Dennis. I saw Where's exercise your, stuff. You see Dennis. with your star of exercise Dennis. stuff. Dennis, first winner, like Dennis. Tom. It's 1999. Okay, let's spin again. Let's spin again. I, we have four of these to give away. More okay. of the Starbucks card. You can always return that one and get that one, or just keep it and forget it. Okay, Peter. Four of the Starbucks cards. Okay, and I see Anastasia Wong. Are you present? I don't see her in the participant list. Okay, Not in there. okay. Then again, I'm gonna use my gift card to get the sweater. Eight dollars. Okay, we're going back the other way. Come on. Spin, spin. I'll hold on to it. Okay. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Right. You practically spent and all your money. And that is... Oh. Ruby Fong. Ruby Fong. What? Your name on there? She was they there earlier, but she's not money. on now. Oh, they, they take some money. of your money. Why do you do that? That's not smart. Let's get our second winner oh, now for tonight. Second winner. Then again... Too bad they didn't. The is, we told them to stay to the end. Weird. I don't know how they're doing. They're trying and to. And the winner is Yukaipa. Yay! Oh, I know you're there. Yeah. Yukaipa's there. <laughs> <laughs> right. here. Okay, number two. We've gotten two given. All right, third winner. Draw my name. Draw my name. Here we go. Spinning that wheel again. So Yukaipa has been a uh, a winner. I know you're supposed to move. And the third one is Jay so Shi. Yeah. J Shi. Don't, don't see his J. name Sheehan. on the participants. Do you, do you see Jay Shi in uh, Edith? Nope. Unless they then spell again. their name differently, I don't see that person. Then again. Okay. Come on, we gotta we'll get our third winner. Is my name there? I'm looking for my name. <laughs> I'm looking for my no, name. No, pick me, pick me. Here oh, we go. Boy, my mouth is watering from the, a frappuccino or something. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, no, he doesn't God. get another one. Spin again. that again. He already won. Yeah. And the winner is. Sorry. Victor San Vicente? No, JC again. Oh, it's not, not true. Yeah. Oh, that will again. Again. again and again. Is it going around and around so the other people get a chance? It's, it's random. Okay. Gloria Hom. Gloria, are you still Gloria, here? Are you present? I'm here. Yay. Okay. Yay. Yay. Starbucks winner. You can go have a frappuccino. $20 gift card. Uh, All right. And okay. our last $20 gift card is coming right up. One more. No, we have one, one more. more. We have one more Starbucks. One card. more gift card. One more Starbucks. And then the grand prize. Yes. Oh, two more. And the winner is Elise Wong. Elise Wong. Oh, hey. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> okay. We've given away I'm four. Here. We've given away four now, Peter, haven't we? Four. That's yes, four. that's okay. correct. The grand prize now will be the last. first prize is a $50 gift card on an Amazon gift card. Right. Hey, let's spin it again. <laughs> and uh, also, oh, I just wanted to, Jerry, there's going to be an extra bonus to that too, right? Oh, the extra bonus is that Dave Yick says that he will buy you a special patrons membership. Wow. <laughs> right. And the winner is Vicky Young. Vicky, are you present? <laughs> Vicky Young, are you here? Do not see Vicky Young on. We Sorry. can make that Peter Young. <laughs> <laughs> All right, another spin. Or Autumn Young. There's an Autumn Young on. <laughs> another spin. Life is busy. And sometimes. And the winner is, come on. And. Fabric refresher. 
Oh, oh you got you. Got you. Oh, oh. All right. I nice. Are you there, Bo Chin? Are you still there? Uh, Bao Chin is here. She's muted, so I'll 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 let you know for okay. her. Okay. Well, congratulations all right. to all you winners, and thank you for coming. We're so happy that you came. Congratulations. Thank you, Back thank to you everyone Eden. for attending. Hey, don't see my name down there. Thank <laughs> you. All right. Thank you. Well, congratulations to all the winners. We have to uh, mute everybody. Hang on. Are you all complaining? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There we go. We need to mute everyone for just a second. So thank you to all the winners. And I hope you have enjoyed the virtual membership meeting and a preview of what's to come. On Saturday, February 13th, History San Jose is going to have a webinar for the Lunar New Year, and it will feature our governing uh, trustee, Anita Wong Kwok, who will be sharing Chinese New Year traditions. So stay tuned, um, and stay tuned for the official announcement and the launch of our new website and our member management system. If you haven't renewed your membership but would like to become a member, please make sure you go to www.chcp.org. There you'll find our current and past events, and you can visit our virtual museum. And for anyone that has a high school senior of Chinese descent, you can apply for the Lillian Gongai Memorial Scholarship, where you may be awarded between one and $2,000. You have until March 17th to apply. So look under the scholarship link on the homepage. And now we get to the mingling part of the museum, of the meeting. So what's going to happen is you're going to be randomly put into a breakout room and you'll have approximately 10 minutes where you can social